Hello and welcome to this Automation Academy Mastering the Machine webinar for the 28th of June 2024. Today's topic was PLC hardware and programming. In particular, I went through Advanced HMI's interface with Alan Bradley's RS Logix 5000 and a little bit on Siemens Step 7 and TI Portal. I uh, hope you enjoy it. Hello, folks. And welcome to this, the 75th Mastering the Machine webinar for 28th of June, 2024. Uh, today's topic is going to be PLC hardware and programming. You can see here on the splash screen some of the books that I've published with the same title in the past. And uh, today's topic really is going to be concerning various different brands. So on this uh, little splash screen here, I've got my multi-platform book, which covers mostly Allen Bradley and uh, Siemens, but also has a little bit on Mitsubishi and Omron, things like that. Then I put out a Beckoff book uh, last year, and it is really only available by ordering it directly from me. It is not available on Amazon like the other books are. And then, of course, uh, uh, PLC hardware and programming, advanced PLC hardware and programming, which are available also on Amazon. Uh, I didn't put it here, but I also do have a book called Maintenance and Troubleshooting in Industrial Automation. And you notice this advanced HMI logo here. Uh, advanced HMI is a company I've kind of covered before here. They are located in South Carolina. And just as a coincidence, I happen to be traveling there uh, next week. So I'm leaving Sunday and we'll be going to Orangeburg, South Carolina to take a class in person for three days from uh, Archie Moore, who is the owner of the company. And uh, in addition to advanced HMI, he also knows quite about a bit about Visual Basic and BB.net, which uh, I'm going to be showing a little bit of uh, today. Uh, so what is the Automation Academy. The Automation Academy is a website that I started several years ago. Um, you can find more information on it at automationllc.com. Uh, it contains training videos for Alan Bradley, Simmons, Beckoff, Omron, that sort of thing as far as PLCs go. Uh, there is some stuff on HMIs and SCADA, a little bit on advanced HMI itself, although I do recommend you go directly to uh, www.advancedhmi.com to download the software, which is free. Um, we do have a library, lots and lots of technical documents and some software downloads, including free PLC software uh, for Omron and, and some things like that. I think RS Trainer is on there. We have a community with some interest groups called IO Central that is free for anybody, even if you're not a member of the Automation Academy itself. And uh, we do have these Mastering the Machine webinars about one, once a month uh, now. I think I've been doing one a month for the last uh, probably two or three months. On special occasions, I would probably do uh, an, extra, uh, an extra webinar if necessary on the topic of choice. Uh, so one of the things I've been pushing lately is that it's not just all about PLCs. There are lots of other topics that need to be covered. Um, you can see on the bottom level of this little pyramid here, you know, we start out in school with reading and math and writing and that kind of thing and get the basics down. Uh, maybe learn a little bit of physics and electric uh, electricity, electronics, logic, that sort of thing. And then we decide to concentrate on industrial automation and we get into Things like basic fluid power motors, uh, we have to understand digital and analog before we get into PLCs. Uh, there's lots of communication protocols you need to know something about, uh, sensors, things like that. Um, so the, this is a list of some of the things that when I teach classes, I kind of throw out there and say, you know, check the little boxes of the things that you don't have a, a full understanding of and let me know and we can cover those in addition to the PLC programming classes that I offer up. Uh, let me see what else we've got here. Uh, this is something that's coming up and I'm going to mention this again at the end. 
Uh, I'm making a presentation at this conference um, at the end of July, July the 25th through the 26th. Uh, it's a two-day conference in Houston. You can find it at uh, just about anywhere on LinkedIn. There's a whole lot of people uh, posting on OT OTSkatacon uh, there. And of course, you could just look it up on Google or you can go directly to the site and sign up for it. They will be streaming uh, this also as well as in, in person. And I am giving away a um, membership, full one-year gold membership with access to everything um, if you attend this conference. So if you see this on YouTube or whatever, and it is before July the 25th, uh, sign up and you would get a free membership here at the Automation Academy. In any case, uh, what I'm going to cover today is uh, some different topics here uh, related to PLC hardware and programming. And we can kind of talk about any uh, platform that you want to, but I'm gonna start out here with uh, Alan Bradley. So uh, one of the problems I've had in the past when I have taught Alan Bradley classes is that uh, if students share a PLC, um, they can create their own program and have them, you know, their own tags completely independent of, um, completely independent of other programmers, right? They can each have their own programs and they don't have to use controller tags. If you've done uh, Alan Bradley programming, and I'll go ahead and pull that screen over here, you will see that you can have uh, separate programs here. And each one of these programs has its own tags, right? So each student could have auto cycle, a green stack light, all these different things, and they can have different routines attached to only them. But the problem that I've had in the past is even if you had an HMI uh, of some kind attached to it, the, the HMIs that I use for automation training, for instance, a Canadian company, uh, they only attach to controller tags. So if you had buttons and things for the controller tags, you would only be able to uh, use them one person at a time. They don't dig down into the you know, student one, student two, student three, and student four um, sections into these separate programs. So one of the things that I've done here it, it recently, uh, speaking of advanced HMI, is I have created an HMI. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and show you kind of what I've got so far. It is created in Visual Studio, and I've kind of gone over this before, uh, how this works. It's Visual Studio, but again, you go to advanced HMI and you get their software, and it has like plugins and uh, you can, for instance, let's just open any one of these screens. We'll open up the main screen. There it is, right? And if I go to toolbox, I can go to all these different items and I could pull them onto this screen and then configure them. Let's say I check a button and I go to the properties of the button, I can see all the different things attached to this button, all the properties and things like that. So these objects are provided by advanced HMI. So you can see here, advanced HMI controls, momentary button. And I would grab uh, one of those from the toolbox and I would drag it over here and configure it. And then you can see down here, this is the driver for the PLC. Uh, so those are some of the things that you wouldn't normally have in uh, in Visual Studio, right? You wouldn't have drivers for PLCs and you wouldn't have some of these objects that look like Allen Bradley push buttons and things like that. So I'm actually going to start this uh, program and I'm going to show you what it would look like from the perspective of a student. I'm going to drag this part out of the way. Okay, so you can see here. Uh, one of the things that happens here is this remains stationary in the upper left corner of your screen, and you can't get rid of it other than exiting. Now, this part, this is one of the reasons that I'm going to uh, South Carolina to take a class from this guy. I can type this stuff in here. So this is an OPC topic if I wanted to use the emulator. And you can see it appear up here. So I'm able to get this information to these individual screens, right? Here's an IP address. I'll go ahead and put in the actual 
uh, IP address of the PLC that I'm attached to, even though this doesn't work right now, 107. So it doesn't matter what address I would type in, but this is a typical thing that you would do. So if I go to my program, this is the information that I have. Actually, this is 135, not that it matters again, but uh, this is the actual PLC that I'm attached to here. So if you can see my little screen up in the corner there, you can see the PLC behind me. So this is one of those little suitcase trainers, and it is a version 19 uh, PLC. So it doesn't matter what version it is from your standpoint if you wanted to use this HMI. But then the next thing to do uh, would be to go and push one of the buttons. So I'm going to go to student one main, and this is the same screen that I showed before. And there it is. So what this did, it's already connected because the driver works and I have a, a cable connected to the PLC. And it is running some code in here. So if I push a button, for instance, right, the little lights, this is just a test program. These are normally closed push buttons. And I have these for all students. So for instance, let's say I go to a different student and let's see, should replace this. And I'm gonna go into auto mode for this student. And you can see it quickly responds and none of these buttons work uh, because I'm not in manual mode anymore, right? So now we'll go back to the student one main screen and you can see we're still in manual mode there. So these are completely independent uh, because they're in different programs. So I'm gonna go back to this and show you these different programs. So what I did here is I created tags in each one of these sections. Right, all these tags here. And then I just copied the programs. You've got push button one, whatever. These are aliased. So if you know Alan Bradley programming, you would know what an alias is. There are only six tags that you would need to create to be able to use this HMI. The other thing is notice that I have uh, covered up, right? When I drag this screen in here, I covered up the HMI. It is a you know obtainable again. But it, it gets covered up, but this screen here in the upper left does not get covered up. Um, so actually, I kind of consider that a good thing. That's a little bit of the advanced HMI. It's just built in. Uh, but I kind of like that. So there is a lot to learn to program this advanced HMI stuff. It's pretty easy to create a single screen and just drag an object on here and make it run like this and set up the driver. What is not easy is like all this screen switching and uh, a couple of errors that I have right now. If you do not have the driver set up properly, and as I mentioned, if I do the comm setup, I'll go ahead and do that again, right? That's this screen. If I do not have this set up right and it doesn't put this data in here properly, it will freeze. And the only way that I can stop the program is to go back in here and in debug hit terminate all. So that's not a good way to stop the HMI. And honestly, I don't want to give, uh, you know, students have enough to worry about taking a PLC class without getting in and having to run Visual Studio also. So the ultimate goal of this would be they would have an executable file. They would uh, start the, the program and you would get this, right? And if you had this setup screen, you would set it up. It would put all the information in the drivers, whether you're using an OPC driver or whether you're using the Ethernet IP driver, and then you would bring up your screen like that. So there is the main screen. Each student would have the main screen and then would have also an analog screen. So that's like this. And analog screen, right? It does more or less the same thing. I've given the student four normally open push buttons, four normally closed push buttons. I've given them a couple of potentiometers. Now, this creates a value from uh, zero to 1,000. And really, in a real PLC, usually you get zero to 32,767. And there's a reason for this I go through in a lot of my classes. That is because you're using a signed integer and the highest bit 
actually makes it negative and we don't use any negative numbers in here. And I could have gone, uh, you know, zero, I could have put the range in here as zero to 32,767, but then these little numbers wouldn't have showed up very well on this dial. And I think this works pretty well here. Uh, just for fun, I will edit this and we will put student one, I'll put a value in channel one out and show you how that little needle works. Uh, this is basically the interface. So there's student one's tags and it is, let's see, H channel one. It's one of the tags that I had to create here for students. H channel one in and out. Right, H stands for HMI in case you're wondering. Okay, so here, let's say I type in 500. Right, a little bit on editing that and then bring this back up and you'll see the needle is up to 500. So I scaled both of these just zero to a thousand. And then you would have to go in and if you were teaching a class, you would explain to the students that normally this would be zero to 32,767. And you could even do some math in here and go ahead and uh, multiply this value by 327, actually 32.767, and you would get zero to 32767. And you could simulate a real analog input in that way or real analog output. So that's a little bit on the Allen Bradley side. Um, this HMI software does work with different brands. So I'm going to drag this in here and we'll take a look and see what other kinds of... You can see that the screen's a little different when it's running and when it's not running. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this, hit exit, and you see it flip back to what we had here. And th this is the list of all the drivers. And uh, again, from advanced HMI, if I want to do uh, Ethernet IP for control logics, I would drag this driver in here, and then configuring it looks like this. Right, so you can see here, I've got my 192, 168, 2, 135 as I typed in on the setup screen that goes into the driver and the ideal idea behind this again would be I'll go ahead and start it again uh, to fill this out and then all that information would go up here into the top so that's the things that I'm working on this like I said it works pretty well right now but I'm going to go up to uh, South Carolina this week, and I'm going to take a class in person and solve a couple of these problems. Like I said, the freezing problem when the driver does not appear uh, or does not connect, right? That happens on both the OPC and on the Ethernet, uh, the Ethernet connection. And then also, I don't really want the student to be able to resize the screen. So I need to figure out a way how to freeze that. And there is a kind of a way set up in here to do it, but it doesn't really work. There's my student one main again. And we're, there we go. So we're back to operating the HMI. So that's a little bit of a look at the Allen Bradley side of this. But as you can see, if I exit, there are drivers for all kinds of things. You got Modbus RTU, that's for remote terminal units. You could use this with Omron, for instance. OPC DACOM is what I use for the emulator, and OPC works with most PLCs. Uh, I honestly don't know what works with Siemens. Um, I do know that, for instance, I could use TwinCat with Beckoff. Um, Beckoff's a kind of an interesting story, though. I, I done some Beckoff webinars here. And Beckoff has its own visualization, and its visualization works very much like advanced HMIs does. If I'm uh, running the program simulating it, I can pull my uh, screen right out of here, right? It's actually in Visual Studio, just like advanced HMI is, and then pull that screen out. And I've done this on previous 
webinars, and then I can hit the go-to buttons on the screen, and it opens different screens within Beckoff. So I'm not sure there's a huge need for advanced HMI with Beckoff because it, it already has that built in. But you can see here all this other stuff works, like Omron Ethernet fins. That's a different type of Ethernet. I know they also work with Modbus, and the OPC works on almost any PLC. You can just uh, type in a topic and uh, link to the IP address that way. Not sure what this is. That's part of what I'm going to ask Archie. What is the simulator com? Simulator in what? Maybe it had. Maybe he has a PLC um, simulator. You know that that simulates other PLCs and things like that. So I'll be learning a lot of that when I go take this class. And I think uh, I see a Philip on here. And if this is Phil Scruggs, uh, I will be heading through Atlanta, which is where Phil lives, on the way to Orangeburg, South Carolina. Is that you, Phil Scruggs? It is. It is. Well, I'm I'm a uh, I'm actually leaving Sunday morning, and I'll be driving down uh, to Orangeburg, South Carolina, and I'm stopping at Micro Center <laughs> because you got. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'll meet you there. <laughs> okay, that'd be great. So <laughs> that'd be fun. For noon, hopefully uh, it'll be open. And uh, yeah, uh, headed through Marietta and, and uh, you know, right there on the interstate. And I'm going to try to find a Raspberry Pi 5. Uh, that's kind of my goal. But uh, so uh, a little more on this. So another thing that happened, I'm going to uh, uh, bring this screen up again. You notice here that I am not using remote desktop. Um, I am using something called HelpWire. And the reason is I tried to use remote desktop and I had two really big problems. Um, I am using Windows 10 Professional on the computer that I'm on right now. It is Automation NTH's computer and uh, it has IT stuff all over it, right? So I'm an administrator, but I'm probably not a full administrator. And then the thing that I was trying to remote desktop to is this desktop, which is student 14-5 which is an automation training Windows 7 computer, uh, Windows 7 professional. And while remote desktop does work between those two platforms, it keeps appending um, if I type in instructor, which is the login for student 14-5, since I am the instructor, but it keeps appending um, instructor at automation nth, uh, dot com. And I looked at this up, if you guys can Google this yourself, but there are very few ways to get around that. That is a security thing that uh, I think people set up when, when the uh, IT department owns your computer, they set it up and it's really hard to bypass that. So I had to find another method and this help wire does it. Uh, basically you send a link to the other computer and then you bring it up and I left it up all night. So this has been running, um, on, for the computer that is behind me, you can kind of see over here uh, where I'm pointing and that, that computer's running and it's been running all night and it seems to work pretty well. So if you ever have this problem um, where you can't connect with remote desktop, which I've done many times in the past, uh, try this help wire. It works, seems to work pretty well. So on this other computer, uh, I opened up not only my RS Logix 5000, right? And I'm running this of course, with the advanced HMI PLC, but I also opened up some of these other programs. So I've got my TIA portal program here and I did fire up the simulator yesterday. Let me see if I can uh, bring up some of these other things. So here's TIA portal. Uh, I am not running the simulation on it right now. We'll see if I can go to Simulation, start. So here is my nice little PLC here, direct at slot one. And then I can take my program and theoretically load it. Let's do a search. So scan completed, zero accessible devices. Well, it didn't find my other device here. Of course, here's this 1214. Ah, that's why. 
right? So this is the IP address. So I don't know that I necessarily need to uh, run this today unless anybody has a specific question about running this, but unconfigured PLC, it may already be running even. Nope, not running. So I can't find my accessible devices, but that's how you would simulate this normally. And I did have it running yesterday. And for whatever reason, it is not running right now. So I can't download directly to the device. And last time I did a webinar, I did this, but my software did not have the HMI software in it. So let's try this again. This is normally how you would do this. Let's try this. Extended downloaded device, not gonna work. Oh, it's possible here. I don't like fumbling around while I'm showing this stuff, so I'm probably not gonna mess with this much. But this is how you would simulate it. If you wanted to simulate the HMI, you would do more or less the same thing. Uh, here is the HMI, which was the last thing that I did yesterday at a comfort panel. And this program was one that I used uh, locally here with a simulator, and so I named it Frank Zero. Uh, ABD, because ABD was the one taking the class up here back in January. And uh, we we did this full thing with the simulator. Let me see if it starts this way. I'm not going to mess a lot with this simulation. Start. Of course, the simulator is already running. Only one unconfigured PLC simulation may exist. Okay. Well, that's a that's another feature of Siemens, right? It kind of freezes up here and gives you a little ball until you hope it's not going to time out after two minutes. I really don't need to wait two minutes. So while I'm doing that, I will bring up yet another one and we'll run a different simulator with this one. So this is Somatic Manager. This is the older uh, PLC and its simulator works quite well. Uh, you simply press this. You wish to save it. Uh, nah, don't need to do that. Actually, it looks like I hit the simulation and it was already running. We'll run it again. There we go. There's the PLC. And all you need to do to simulate on this one or run it is download everything like this. With Siemens, always download in reverse order. And the reason is, if you had uh, downloaded OB1 first, and it calls all these other routines, right? It would go in there, start calling the routines, and the routines wouldn't be in the PLC yet. So that's why we're downloading in reverse order. So I want the DB1 to go in there first. And then I hit download, being processed by another one. Do you want to continue the function? Sure, yes, yes. And that's because I had those open. And now, if I go to my simulator, there's the PLC simulator, and I can turn things on as needed. It's kind of a neat, neat feature here. Let's actually see something running and go online with it. Uh, we'll open up. I know this one, uh, Bits, is not running, so I would ha actually have to make it run using this. Uh, this is something else. Okay, so I'm going to pick uh, OB1. There's the calls. I have these as always off. And I'm going to change this, just maybe delete this, and then try another download. Okay, so that should be running. So don't get confused by this PLC up here, which was the old simulator, right, for TI Portal. And here I'm running this one on uh, step seven. Okay, so go back to my fake PLC here. There it is. Go back to OB1 and monitor it. Put my glasses on. Ah, we need to run, right? Run the PLC. 
One thing very important here also, do not put it in regular run. If you're ever messing with step seven, put it in run P and run P allows you to edit the program and download while you're running. So there we go. And you can see it running here. Um, so if I go into my bits routine and I put on my glasses, I can see this running. Do things like push these buttons, right? So this is kind of like the advanced HMI simulator, except it's uh, cheap and cheesy, right? Instead of pushing buttons, you just push these things. So push button three, you can see it open up the logic here and turn off the light. Uh, turn off push button two, which was that one. Turn push button three back off. And then I have a typical hold in circuit here. So you can see the lights come on. It's not quite as pretty as having an HMI, like, like I showed with advanced HMI. So there might be a good reason to use um, the advanced HMI uh, with this, right? However, the other thing that I can do is actually add an HMI in here. So WinCC allows you to do that, right? Uh, if I said add insert new object, you can see here, I've got a lot of different things. I have an HMI station I could put in here and then I could use WinCC and make my own little advanced HMI uh, program if I wanted to. So this is the old school stuff. It's not, I wouldn't call it obsolete, but it's it's a you know little harder platform to learn. For instance, you have all these little windows uh, open here and that's kind of a pain, right? So the editor window, I've got the PLC simulator window itself. And then I've got all these windows within here. So all that is pretty hard to manage. If I had a VAT table in here, I would have that open also. So that's kind of um, a little bit painful uh, to deal with. So because of that, I'm going to shut off my glasses. I'm going to go back to uh, here and I'm going to stop the simulator. So go here and just kill it. Do I wish to save it? So if you ever save this, all you're saving is the layout. Uh, it will actually open up the last one that you used if you wanted to do this. So you can see uh, there's a real use for advanced HMI here. This would be handy. Uh, I'm not sure which driver I would use. That's one of the things I plan to uh, ask Archie. So I'm going to say no, and that closes the simulation. Okay, uh, connection aborted, right? I was monitoring and I can no longer monitor. So this is, um, you know, step seven, there would be a reason to use something like advanced HMI for that. So it's one of the things I might do. All I'd have to do is use the same buttons and then create a driver for it. And uh, I'm not sure how I would map the tags because uh, in Siemens, the only way to make uh, tags kind of more private is to give each student a data block. And then you would uh, access the data block from each screen. So I would have the equivalent of the HPB that I had and probably put the bits for it inside of a data block. Right, create a data block here. Right, that's one of the painful things about um, step seven right, the old step seven, is that you have to create these things one at a time in the manager and then open them up in the editor. You can use things like UDTs. They've had those for a long time, but it is a little more painful to program step seven. Now, last webinar, uh, somebody, actually last webinar, probably the advanced HMI webinar, uh, somebody asked if I could cover Siemens statement list, but that person's not on here, and I had actually planned on covering more Siemens uh, today. So that's one of the reasons that I had these up is in case uh, somebody showed up and really wanted to go over more uh, Siemens statement list, right? Uh, let's see if there's anything in here that is statement list. I don't think there is. One of the things you can do that's kind of cute is you can turn a ladder program into statement list. So I'm going to go ahead and, right, I've got some uh, elevator logic in here. If I say view and I go to statement list, there's your statement list, right? So that's a good way. If you ever want to learn statement list, 
uh, go ahead and write your logic in ladder and then just go view in statement list. And you can see how it relates to the ladder. It's not really all that hard to read. Uh, this is or, right? FLR1 call PB, there's the address for it, or with uh, this and, which is elevator one push button. Let's go ahead and view it back in ladder. That's what the logic looks like. So it's or with this branch. Go back and view it in statement list. And that's what it would look like. So for anybody who is tuning into this on YouTube and really wants to understand the uh, statement list part of step seven, uh, this is a good way to first get into it. Now, there's a lot more you can do. For instance, if you want to do indirect addressing, the only way to do that in step seven using a pointer is using statement list. So you really have to understand this uh, to be able to do that. Right, so this is just ladder converted into say, statement list. And I do have in my book, if you, anybody uh, here has advanced PLC hardware and programming, I do cover that, uh, how to do pointers in statement list. I put some logic in there for recipe selection, and you can kind of see that. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to go ahead and minimize this and minimize this. So that gets everything else. Uh, out of the way. And then we are to TIA portal. And I'm going to take a take a whack here since uh, nobody is asking any questions about step seven. I'm going to go ahead and uh, try to simulate again. So typically what you would do here is go here, right? Make sure you're, you've got your program open. And I tried this before and it didn't work. Do a simulation start. We'll disable all other online interfaces. That's important. And normally this works just fine. And I'm going to go ahead and try this. Maybe this time we'll do a start search again. Not sure why I'm not finding my PLC. There we go. So I do have my PLC here, and you can see here, uh, the big thing here was I had to go the, with the PNIE, which I have always thought was the regular connection, but it's not, right? The direct at slot one, X1, is the direct connection, which is what I used before. And uh, so here's this, right? And then I will load. So there we go, download to device, load it all. And this is the way to run this. Start modules, you do have to check this. Go ahead and start the PLC module and finish. Okay, so now I've got some stuff in here that should be kind of running. So again, it's kind of like my advanced HMI. I can pull this off to the side, hang it out there. And uh, again, turn on my glasses. And see my logic. So I could toggle this push button, right? Modify to one. And I can toggle it that way. That's kind of painful. So the better way to do this, right, rather than modifying things, would be to go ahead and bring up the HMI. So once again, I'm running here in my PLC. I can then go to my HMI and same thing, start simulation. I should be able to bring that up. Where is start simulation? There it is. And I did a little bit of this yesterday. And it's got some other things here, right, that I honestly don't really need things like this e-stop. This was a fault that I put in there. We'll go ahead and close it. And this is my fake PLC. Okay, so... The auto manual should be working here, but 
Noted. There we go. So this does much the same thing that my advanced HMI does. Notice I've got a buzzer here that's kind of cute. And then this is the fault list. So what I'm doing here is I am driving this code with this HMI. Okay. Um, and what I did here is like, if I have, this is an e-stop, right? So this is telling you, oh, you have an e-stop. Go ahead and do that. And then go ahead and press your power button and reset your fault. And now I have no faults. So this is some basic logic that I used for uh, the guys at ABD uh, to illustrate how to simulate both the HMI and the PLC and TIA portal. Once again, this is um, this is similar to what I had in the advanced HMI, right? Let's go ahead and uh, drag that over here. Go ahead and start it. And there we are again. And this time I'm going to just start it without even any addresses or anything. And you can see uh, here I'm running my advanced HMI. I've got much of the same kind of push buttons here, right? Auto, manual, reset, just like I do here in Siemens. They both run at the same time. They're both effectively doing the same thing. Uh, but as I mentioned last time, one of the problems that I had, by the way, I'm going to click back on this, and you'll notice that this advanced HMI screen disappears, right, because I've brought this to the front. So my focus is here, uh, but this this made the advanced HMI go behind it. I kind of like that. So here, it's going to do more or less the same thing. I should be able to bring this screen up, right, so I can go to my PLC. I can go to this, but there's nothing permanently uh, in front here, you know, like this screen is. But I don't think that's going to be a drawback when doing the RS Logix 5000 stuff. So those uh, are, are a look at three different ways to simulate uh, programming with PLCs. As I said, uh, Siemens, if you have WinCC installed, which I do not, I bought the, um, the Micro, which works with the 1200s, and uh, installed it on my computer. It's version 17. It did not have uh, WinCC in it. Uh, I believe it did have the simulation, but even that I think was hard to bring up. So the only thing I've got here uh, for TIA Portal is this version 15, right? Which I'm using here, TIA Portal version 15. But you can see the simulation works pretty well. If you happen to have this software, then you wouldn't need something like advanced HMI. You would simply, oh, we got back to this, right? You would simply uh, use the built-in software, right? The WinCC software. So TI Portal works pretty well if you've got these. But the big advantage to advanced HMI is it is free. If you can navigate through creating screens like this, then it is free and you could use it to access the PLC of your choice. So that is a look at everything today. A uh, little bit of advanced HMI, a little bit of Alan Bradley programming, a little bit of old school Siemens, which is minimized now and I don't have access to the bottom of the screen, and a look at TI Portal. Uh, I've done a lot on Beckhoff uh, before. Of course, I have Beckhoff installed here. If somebody wanted uh, to look at uh, the back off programming, I could get into that. But uh, there's a little message from uh, Phil. Thanks for showing up, Phil. Um, but that's a that's a look at some of the different methods of simulating, you know, very basic stuff. I think uh, the a typical auto manual, right, uh, routine and the stack light illustrates how to do this. I always love this little e-stop. And I've done the same thing over here. I have the e-stop, uh, can create a fault that way. Reset the e-stop, hit the power button, reset the fault, and you get the general idea. So this is typically the way that I uh, introduce people to PLCs if they don't already know it. And I think advanced HMI is going to be a great tool in helping me do that.
So back to uh, this, notice this stays in the front. And to get rid of this, I'm gonna go ahead and hit exit. Uh, so it's not all about PLCs. You gotta know things about data. You gotta know things about, of course, electricity and things like that. And in, in addition, you've gotta know about things like Visual Studio which will help you create lots of other logic. It's the typical if then else stuff. And then there is your typical ladder logic. Another look at OT SkataCon coming up end of July. Encourage anybody to investigate that. You can either go to event, event create or connect with me on LinkedIn. I put lots of ads up for OT SkataCon since I'll be speaking there. Uh, you do get a free membership to the Automation Academy. If you attend OT SkataCon, buy a ticket, either do it virtually or in person. There is lots of swag there. They're giving away uh, Siemens PLCs and uh, PLC Next PLCs. They're a sponsor, Phoenix, uh, Siemens, Ignition. I don't think Ignition's giving away any free Ignition uh, software. That would be awesome. But Ignition's another platform that you can install for free and run for, a, I think, two hours. It'll run for free. Uh, and then Beckoff, right? Beckoff's another one, I believe, that is a sponsor. Their software runs for seven days. So pretty awesome stuff. Uh, that is pretty much the end of the webinar for today. Uh, the next webinar will be July the 20th, 2024. That is right before OT SkataCon. That is the weekend before it. I do not know what the topic will be. Might even continue on this topic since I kind of uh, hit a bunch of different things. If anybody wants me to cover more things on PLCs, simulations, HMIs, by that time, of course, I'll be back from uh, advanced HMI. So I'll have a lot more information on how to do all this fun stuff. Uh, but anyway, that's it for me for today. Uh, we had a pretty good day of it. A few people showed up. I appreciate it as usual. And we will see you all later.